So real quick, going over an implement setup, there's times when you want to have more than one implement set up, even though you're physically using the same booms on the vehicle. In this case, the Rogue Gator 700, it's, it's a set distance on how wide you can spread, but you might want to set up a second one that includes the, the fence nozzles and another one that doesn't include it, or however you wanna do that. But in case you need to change and or make a new one, uh, this is how you go through it. In this case, I've only got one set up and we'll go through and we'll look at what's already set up. But what you would do otherwise is just hit the new button and it would start the process here from the beginning. Um, you walk through it. In this case, we're, we're doing spraying and then we'll tell it what type. There's a pole, self-propelled front or rear boom. Our, ours is a rear boom. Uh, notice the layout. We've got the tabs along the top, the top and the second line. The second line is the sub categories of that one that's highlighted. So we go to the next one. This is what you would name it. You'd want to name it something that you would recognize that's unique to that setup. You would say a rear boom or rear boom fence nozzles, anything like that that would help you remember which one that is. This is grayed out because the style of sprayer that is selected, you don't have other options because usually if it's a self-propelled, it's not a removable sprayer. But you can change that on the other, like a pull type or anything like that. These are all the measurements for your system. There's a couple different places where you're setting up measurements. This is the overall measurement. So in this case, we've got a four, uh, 80, 80 foot booms and I've got the application, which is where it's spreading, is set up for 80 foot. I also matched that with my swath and my physical width. The physical width is not gonna make as much of a difference for us unless we're doing like a, like a neck swath, something where it takes that measurement into account. So in that case, I make all three of those the same. You have your overlap skip, which I wanna keep that zero because I want to spray as if it was, you know, a, a perfect world. Left, right offset, if, you're, if your implement is offset to one side of the, from the center of the machine, in this case it's not, We've got the physical width and the length is talking about the sprayer, not the whole vehicle, just the actual sprayer itself. That's why it's only uh, like a foot eight inches because that's about the width of the spray boom. Next we've got, this is the rate and section control module setup. So what it did when I set this up, it recognized the module right off the bat. Then I just had to go in and set up what I wanted it to do and its measurements and all that stuff. So once you're in there and you say modify, you can change the channel. These are grayed out because you don't have other options there. This is where you set another measurement. This is the forward back. So this says uh, application forward back offset. This is going to be from your back axle. It's gonna move it backwards in this case. That's why it made it a negative number. Left, right, that's another place that you can set it off based on the machine if it's left or right. That's the actual number on the module. If you look on the sticker, it'll have that same number there. It's good to double check that and make sure that you're using the right one. We do want section control, so we turn that on. Um, that's the fuel IQ basic is what we want. We only have one module, it's controlling the whole thing. We're using boom valves on the Rogator 700. And then we do have fence row nozzles. We have both of them. Currently they're not set up, but we will have them. We've got the switches for them, and so we will be using that. The Nozzle wiring is all, it was originally Raven, and so that's what we're still using, is we'll be reusing the, those. Here we set up, we say, how many sections do we have? You'll have to actually look at your booms and figure out how many sections you've got going on there. Here on this Rogator, we've got seven sections, and that's talking about sections of spray nozzles, not including the fence row nozzles. Those are counted separately later. Keep that in mind because that can throw off your count. So we'll see here, we've got each one of these sections. And you can scroll over here. That's why you don't see the seventh section off the bat. You tap on each one because in this case, these sections are not the same uh, width as each other. They're set up according to what they actually measure. And so that math comes into uh, where the spray would theoretically go and how that works. Then you've got your latency. The latency is talking about how long it waits or starts ahead of time as you're going into a pass. In this case, I've got it set up. It seems to work pretty good with a negative latency. So as I'm driving into the pass, it turns on just 0.3 seconds before to try to get that timing right. And that's kind of based on average. You might have to tweak that a little bit to make sure that you get it timed. 
for your machine and how you drive. Those definitely affect it. So your on latency is as you're going into a pass, your off latency is at, as if you're going out of a pass. So turning on and turning on. Your uh, ply latency to boundary is talking about uh, as you're spraying the boundary around the outside of the field is what that's talking about. Uh, sections off when stopped on this setup we can turn that on because our valves do allow us to shut it off and we have a PWM pump so that we can turn the pump all the way off rather than just uh, turn it way down. So the next section we're oh, overlap sorry is going into we can set an overlap for when we're starting so we were able to set the overlaps on each side of the boom before now we can set an overlap as we're starting to spray and stopping spraying we can tell it to put an overlap and that can be useful because you want to make sure that you don't have a skip or a gap and uh, or if you're overlapping too much you can also set those to a you can set it to a negative or a positive number based on what you need and then your coverage, you can leave those alone, but if you if you feel like those are a little bit out of range, you can change those coverage switching overlap. So as it switches on or off, that's the percentage that it decides whether to switch it on or off is once it hits that. Rate control, so with section control is turning the sections on and off. Rate control is as it adjusts the rate of those sections. In this case, we can't change the rate of one section. We change the rate of all of the sections just because of how this is set up, which is why we have rate control turned on and drive type is PWM because that's how it controls this hydraulic pump. The hydraulic pump is what's driving the, the fluid into the booms, and so that's how it's controlling it. Uh, we don't have an auxiliary valve. We're not controlling that. We're just doing the section valves. Uh, counting the number of nozzles, I've counted 48, and that's nozzles in the booms, not the fence nozzles. So keep that in mind. That'll throw off your number if you don't keep that in, in mind. Uh, control valve behavior when sections are closed. You lock it in minimum position. Later on, you can see that minimum position is set by our calibration value, which for us is a PWM val value of zero. But that's what that's set up as. So drive one is talking about our rate and section control module. It's controlling a flow meter type that is a Raven. Our flow meter on this machine is a Raven. You'll have to check to make sure that you have that and you can find it. We're set up for gallons, and the flow meter on this one was 1400, and after a calibration, this is the number that we found to be a little closer estimate of uh, our calibration. The drive here is just talking about the overall width again. You can adjust it there. It's the same number as before. This is another place to adjust it. Minimum override speed means that that's the minimum speed that you need to be going in order for the spraying to be able to happen. We set a zero minimum flow limit because we can actually turn our pump off. Um, in reality, you would find out exactly what your nozzles need to have as a flow rate because you would want it to turn on at the minimum rate that the nozzles can actually spray because you can run into problems there. If it's running below rate, you've got five seconds that it's waiting, maybe it's still ramping or what, and it can wait that long and then you can actually turn that up before it actually kicks a warning message out at you. So pump disarm switch, I've got that turned on because from the display we turn the pump on and off and it's not really turning it on and off, it's arming it, meaning it making it ready. Record coverage is talking about the yellow coverage as you're spraying and making it uh, have coverage on the map. You can turn that off so that it doesn't clutter up your map depending on the preference. Jump start speed. Jump start is when you're like backing up into a corner. You just want to manually over override it. So in this case you would click it up and it goes into jump start. It goes into jump start as if you're driving four miles an hour and it does it for a time period of eight seconds. And then the shutoff speed is you can go this slow, whatever you set that as, before it says, hey, you're going too slow, I'm not even going to try to turn on. And you can set that whatever it needs to be at, kind of based on your nozzles and your driving type. Now I turned on virtual tank, we're running gallons, 700 gallons. Uh, the warning type that I chose is a volume, and at 70 gallons it gives me a warning so that it gives me a warning before I'm actually running out. Once you get through that, you click save, but this is all within the application control. One more section here, we've got the SIM module or signal input. So we can take inputs from the machine 
So inputs would come from like your switches, your master switch, or your uh, engage switch, and these can be assigned here. In this case, uh, lift switch is turned off because we don't have any lift switch. We turned off auxiliary master switch because we're going to use the master switch here and here, and we're going to leave this master switch on while we're running. But it will also turn it off, it just doesn't register on the screen, it just forces it to turn off. Next section is where you actually see those. That's the number on our signal input module. You can verify that on the sticker. And as these are turned on and off, you can see which ones get highlighted. So I'll shut off number one so that we can check it, turn it on, and it clicks to number one. That's the one we want. And then you would take it and you would find section switch one because that's what it pertains to. Select that one, hit OK, and you do that for each section. In this case, we can also turn on the fence nozzle and we can assign those ones based on the list. Then we've got sensors. We can add a sensor in this case because we do have a pressure sensor on the boom and we want to actually add that so we'll just call it pressure because we don't have another sensor to confuse it with. That's the module for the rate and section control which is the one communicating with that pressure sensor. Pressure one is the one we'll use and we familiar with PSI, so we'll keep that consistent. Let's leave the alarm off, but you can turn that on, and what that is going to do is going to alarm you if the pressure is outside of a range that it wants it to be, based on the application rate. So now, finally, for the implement, we get to the summary page. You can verify the settings here, and then make sure and hit save, because if you don't hit save, it doesn't actually save it, you can't keep it there. So then you've got this all set up make sure that it's selected and then you can hit back you can see that it's no longer red and it's ready to go